we still waiting on individuals to come in? I'm looking now. Cindy, this is Jackie Calloway. Do you have um do you have me down? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. As soon as you let me know, we can keep we can go ahead and get going because it's a um with modified time, so we don't do have you the Charmaine, do you want to just go ahead and get started and we'll just do that at attendance? Yes, Charmaine, yes, did you want to go ahead and do it that way? So if you want to go ahead and call the meeting? Yes, I, I'm calling. Uh, it's 901 calling the meeting to order. Yeah. Did everyone get a copy of the agenda? Good news is I'll put it up on the screen, Charmaine. Perfect. All right, getting right, in, getting right into it. Um, minutes for February meeting? June. I don't know why that's... We did February's in June. Um, for June meeting. Oh, June. Is this the special meeting minutes? Oh, this is the meeting minutes. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm well, thinking meeting. of the agenda, not the meeting minutes. Okay, I'm lost. Sorry, guys. Um, on the screen is the meeting minute or for the meeting minutes for February or for June 25th, 2020. If we can review those uh, minutes and if I can have a motion to approve. Uh, Cindy, I'm not able to see the minutes. Um, I, I sent I, them in. I sent them in the email. So no, I, I um, thought we were putting them on the screen. Okay. I was going to put the agenda up on the screen. Oh, the agenda. That's why. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm not able to see that. Is anyone else? I haven't put it up yet. Oh, okay. I'm putting it up now. All right. Hi. Um. Good morning. This is uh, Marsha Guthrie. Uh, I'm seeing the attendance, but I don't see my name reflected. You're not on there, Ms. Guthrie? No, I'm not. I was at the last meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah, what? I was I was yeah, sitting um, in for we... Rachel, but Rachel was not at the meeting. I was there. Okay, I'm sorry. I must have okay. marked the wrong box. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Noted. I will correct that and I will <laughs> update it on the board docs. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Ms. Guthrie, the last time that was the first time you'd come, right? It's last that was June. the first time that I've come since the NAACP seat. I had come a while back um, when Dr. Ruiz was here. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I feel like that the discussion area and the minutes are missing some key elements of what was discussed at last board meeting. What I was going to do is the um, I this is the, what happened, Charmaine, is I never had access to the actual board side. So what happened was that um, when I went to the training because they gave me training to pull put my own board docs up, um, we she was suggesting that because that we're doing verbatim and if we have recordings, we don't need to do verbatim and recordings. So right. what, so I asked her, she said that we can go ahead since we have the recordings to do the recordings and then um, do recordings and then the minutes and the agenda. So those will be up side by side on board docs. Right, and that's fine, um, but I just, that's fine with the recording, and, and I've always been taught that, you know, especially if you're recording, you don't okay. need to, re just even if you weren't recording, you don't need to put all of them, that's just Robert's rule, you don't need to put all of the information word for word in mm -hmm. the meeting minutes, but some of the key elements, courses of action that we discussed, I'm not seeing that, Um maybe another board member another committee member could take a look and maybe i'm missing something or 
I've just not seen some of the key elements of what was discussed at that meeting. <laughs> some of the and usually, yeah, and usually she said that on the minutes we normally just put what motions are going, and that's it. I but if you need me to add okay. anything, I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and Charmin, I don't see I know, the Charmin, this is Reggie. I know it's the same thing as well. Because I attend two other committee meetings, we do get a summary of the most important item that was discussed at the meeting. Yeah, can and we for this one, I did not can see we, that. Can we, because we don't, um, this is a special meeting. Can we postpone these meeting minutes until the next meeting? Um, the only reason why they were they were brought was because you had it on your agenda. Right. I, I mean, we can postpone it and- I don't wanna waste the time to discuss um, okay. meeting minutes because we have a limited time, but I would like to postpone it and ensure that we're putting the key elements of the meeting minutes on the minutes. Yes, ma'am. And usually this was, that was post, that was for a regular meeting. So this is a special meeting. So we could just save it for the next regular meeting. That's so they wouldn't have had to been up for, okay. Any objections uh, to oppose, uh, any objections to um, postponing the meeting minutes? No. No. And Don, can I have a motion to approve? Motion. I'm, um, motion by, by Juan Pagan. By uh, approved. Second by, I believe, I'm not sure who that Reg. second was from. Reg. 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 Very well. Charmaine, can I go ahead and take attendance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Dr. Miriam Lamar, I text you on. She's here, isn't she? Dr. Lamar? Not yet. Oh, I thought that was her talking just now. Okay. Uh, Jackie Calloway, Coalition for Black Student Achievement. Uh, Amanda Canetti from Compass. Howard David, Bobby Howard Davis, Division of Blind Services. Kimberly Spire O. Present. Carl Donaldson. Reggie, Reggie Duran Deeks for the children. Present. Sue Davis Killian, Gold Coast Down Syndrome. Present. Lucia Barnes, Guatemalan Mayan Coalition of Palm Beach County. Jane Marcel, Haitian American Solidarity. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, Maria Antonia. Present. Hispanic Education Coalition, Dr. Joaquin Garcia. Uh, NAACP, Rachel Mond is here. Marshall Guthrie. Oh, Rachel Wait. is here. Yes. Rachel's here? Oh. Okay. Yes. So Rachel and Marsha. Yes. Oh, that's very nice today. Sure. <laughs> Just make it sure right. I heard it's echoing. Uh, Mark Rutherford, Palm Beach County Human Rights Council. Puerto Rican Chamber of Commerce, Evelyn Vargas. Puerto Rican Chamber of Commerce, Juan Pagan. Good morning to all. Urban League of Palm Beach County, LaTerrence Reed. Carrie Wattell, FAU card. She should be excused today, but I'm in her place, Robin Jones. Good morning, Robin. Robin morning. Jones, FAU card. <laughs> Present. <laughs> Palm Beach County Council of PTA, Charmaine Postel. Present. Cassandra Corbin Thaddeus, Palm Beach County of uh, Palm Beach County Council of PTAs. Tri Cities Education Council, Mary Evans. Tri Cities Education Council, Eddie Rhodes. Black Chamber of Commerce, Keely Gideon Taylor. That's it, Sherman. Did I miss anyone that's on the call? I just saw Dr. Robinson's name pop up. Yes, ma'am, we're taking attendance for the committee members right now. Okay, thank you. 
Um, for the record, for the record, is there anyone else that's on the call that is not a committee member? I don't know if we count, but you have Mark um, from IT, Ezra from IT, and Raymond Marshall from IT. Um, we're here to record the public phone bridge and also to provide IT support if someone is having trouble connecting to the meeting. Uh, Cynthia has our names if we need to be on a list somewhere. I had a question. That's why I was coming off of mute. Sorry. Uh, Cindy, I was wondering, um, is, is there a place that the committee listing and contact information is posted? Or is there a way that we could get that? All the members and their names and contact information? Um, I, I don't know if I can give their contact information. I know the board office has it. Okay, so it's posted somewhere? The board, I think they do. Okay, they thank ask you. me for the information and I send it upstairs. Okay, we used to have it um, given out at each meeting a list and you know to check it over. What was that, Kim? Because there's echoing. Oh, I'm sorry. We used to have it available and we'd have a printout every meeting um, that listed the active members and their contact information. So I think it must be loud. Uh, okay, I'll find out. I was, uh, we've been doing this and no one's ever, um, we've never done that. And Maggie, when she left, didn't mention that to me. So I'll find out. Mr. May? Can you guys hear me? Like, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, trying to figure out if um, just this private caller, uh, I'm not sure what the rules the meeting, are. Press pound. Um, to stop moderating, press one. Who is this to private unmute caller? Your line, press two. To play back roster, Press can you three. private caller or hide participants or so name. whoever's calling Unmuted. from their phone can you say something the private caller is the public phone bridge so so what is the public phone bridge to the meeting oh yes uh, so uh, it, the private it call that's our phone bridge you will always see that at all of your meetings Okay, thank you. I wasn't aware what it was. I was just like, what is this private caller? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, no worries. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, um I appreciate it, Raymond. Can you um meet in minutes? Are you sharing your page, Cindy? Or your screen? Sorry, everyone. I actually had a flare up this morning, so I had to get a court, uh, shot, <laughs> um, an emergency shot early this morning. Okay, I don't see Cindy sharing yeah, her I'm screen. Trying, I'm trying, Charmaine, but we're just we can go yeah. right into we can yeah. go right into the agenda item since I know exactly what that agenda item is. Um, yeah, it's not letting me do it, but let me. I'm keep trying. That's okay. Um, diving right into this conversation, diving right into the conversation. One of the things that we wanted to discuss was equity. As a definition, um, 
I want to say last week, I had the pleasure of, and Dr. Robinson is on this call, um, so I can actually extend the floor to her. I had the pleasure of attending Brian Knowles' um, racial equity presentation, and they had a phenomenal definition of equity. Um, our policy, our current equity policy, DEC or equity policy, is stem from equity policy, which is equity as an outcome. I think they even went further to discuss equity as an approach, um, to discuss equity as a framework or get into those steps anyways. So um, Dr. Robinson, since you're on the call, I know I'm calling you out. Uh, could you share that working definition of equity? Okay, thank you. Um, can, can I share my screen? Yes, you should be able to. Okay, I think, uh, okay, Cindy, I think I need you to stop presenting, or at least I, I don't know how to do it with you. Okay, let's see if I can. So really what I'm going to share, what I shared in that um, town hall meeting was just really um, a series of other people's definitions as well as my definition. But it, and the purpose, at least for me sharing this, is not to say that this one, this one, this one, it, any of them in particular are the correct definitions, but to get people to think about um, what they think equity is and for your group then to at least have a consensus in terms of your operational definition. So I think, can you see my screen? Yes, no, maybe so. No? Yes? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. So, all right. So the first thing, and then I'm like, I have a coffee deficit, so I need to read this stuff. So, um, so the first thing is that you, as you mentioned, uh, Ms. Postal, equity as a noun. Um, and so I think it's in our equity policy, something to this effect that, um, equity as a noun is a state where the outcomes, and I added aside from academic achievement, wealth, well-being, you know, et cetera, like you can list a whole bunch of different categories, cannot be predicted by race or any social, cultural, economic factor. Um, then the Center for Assessment and, po and Policy Development says racial equity is a condition that will be achieved if, if one's racial identity no longer predicted in a statistical sense, how one fares. When we use the term, we are thinking about racial equity as one part of racial justice. And thus we also include, and I inserted racial equity as a verb here, work to address root causes of inequities, not just their manifestation. This includes elimination of policies, practices, attitudes, and cultural messages that reinforce differential outcomes by race or fail to eliminate them. So in their definition, they include it in the way I look at it, racial equity, both as a noun and a verb. <clears throat> um, I don't remember whose definition this is. Equity as a verb, intentional work to achieve equity. The noun actually sounds like something I wrote. Um, I'm going to skip this one for now. And somebody's papers are shuffling. I don't know who that is. Equity is, is bless them according to their needs. So that's, that's the definition I use. I make it just very simplistic. Um, <laughs> actually for people who don't want to think hard about this, right? So it's bless them according to their needs. Then let's see. How come I can, okay. Then um, the National Education Association said racial equity or racial justice is the systematic fair treatment of all people resulting in fair opportunities and outcomes for everyone. Racial equity is not just the absence of discrimination, but also the presence of values and systems that ensure fairness and justice, systematic equity, which affirmatively and continually supports and ensures the fair treatment of all people is needed to supplant um, the system of racism. So, um, to me, they, they is more looking at it as a verb. And I know, you know, like this is just my own little personal crazy to separate it as a noun and a verb, but I think that the responses are different depending on how you're focused. And policy link says racial equity 
equity is defined as just and fair inclusion into a society in which all people can participate, prosper, and reach their full potential. Said another way, a racially equitable society is one in which racial disparities in health, education, wealth, and other areas do not exist. And then the last one that I'm going to give you from somebody else is the Annie E. Casey Foundation who said racial justice is the systematic fair treatment of people of all races that results in equitable opportunities and outcomes for everyone. All people are able to achieve their full potential in life regardless of race, ethnicity, or the community in which they live. Racial injustice or racial equity, so they're using the terms interchangeably, goes beyond anti-racism. It's not just what we are against, but also what we are for. A racial justice framework can move us from a reactive posture to a powerful, proactive, and even preventative approach. So, and just to close out my little two cents here, the definition that I've been using for more than 20 years is equity as an algebraic equation here, right? And so, <clears throat> so since this is a um, an advisory committee that looks at school district work, um, I'm going to focus this algebraic equation on academic outcomes. So in this algebraic equation where, you know, you have multiple variables that equal X, right? So X for, at least for my work and definition, is um, to have the students prepared at the end of high school to hit the ground running, whether they go to college, workforce, military, or um, trade school. So that they're and they're ready to be good citizens and so forth, right? So like and that X could be clearly defined as we as is done in algebra, it's like defined later, right? But so but the point is to focus on the outcome here, which is the X, and that's a minimal bar. So equity does not suggest that if somebody is coming out of high school higher than whatever you define X to be, that that is bad. We're not saying that at all, but it's to make sure that nobody is lower than X, so to speak. And so you have all these variables that lead to a student's uh, ability to come out of high school high performing, right? And so you can you can list those things. I mean, each of us can can come up off the top of our head with all the things that we've seen that we know impact um, a child's ability to become a successful adult. We could list all those things. And then, and the reason that's important to me is because I see a lot of people who will focus on one particular thing. Like there's a whole bunch of people doing mentoring, right? And so, yes, having that caring adult is extremely important. But, but if the only variable that we're addressing is making sure that there's that caring adult, then we're not going to get to the X. Right. So if you have a child who who has a very minimal vocabulary coming into kindergarten, unless you are intentionally addressing that low A value, if you will, by some action, then you're not you're not going to get them to the X that you want. You can have a very, very high. I'm going to call it D value, which is the caring adult. But that doesn't mean that you're going to you're going to get to your x because it depends on how long your a is and if you and if you address that specific issue. So I know that for many people when I try to discuss this as an algebraic equation, their eyes roll in the back of their head and maybe this is just my own specific form of crazy, but but this is how I look at it. And so for those that whose eyes are rolling in the back of your head, just look at bless them according to their needs. And I think I'm done unless there's any questions. Does anyone have any questions um, for Dr. Robinson or any additions, anything to add? Kimberly? I would just like to ask, and I, if it was I, like, I can't hear you, Kimberly, or does anybody else here? Um, can you hear me now? No? Um, I'll yeah. write it. Oh, you can hear me. Um, next time there is a, um, a town hall meeting of that type, um, I would ask that we all get invitations. And if we did get one and I somehow missed it, I apologize. But 
I would want to be able to listen in on that and learn as much as I can about everything that's going on in this process so that I can make better decisions for the committee. Okay. In my mind, I shared it, but if I actually did or not, I can't swear to it. <laughs> if I missed it, I apologize. <laughs> if um, just for future reference, if anyone, any of your groups are having anything like that, um, please send it out to the rest of the group because I know I would have um, participated and wanted to listen. In. Okay, that's um, good. So, Cindy, can I'm sorry to interrupt. Cindy, can you just share the when you get it the email list of the members, and in that way, I could just share that stuff without bothering you. Sure can. Rachel, did you have something to say? I did. Um, so in response to Kimberly's request, we are having an advancing the mission session coming up at the end of July, July 29th. And um, I believe Cindy, uh, Cynthia shared that with us earlier this week. Uh, it's open to anyone who has um, participated in racial equity training, ra racial equity institute training. And we invite you to um, to join us because we're having in-depth conversations around uh, normalizing, operationalizing, and like developing a racial equity statement. All of the all of the work that goes around uh, what Dr. Robinson said within our respective sector. Thank you. I was um, registered to take uh, the initial session this summer, but COVID happened, so. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to take the advance without the beginning, but I would be interested if it's possible. Um, it's strongly recommended, but I can follow up with you and see if there's um, an opportunity for you to join us in July as well. Thank you. You're welcome. May I ask a question? Okay, um, Ms. Carleen. Do I see, like, I, I'm having a, show me, am I still muted? No, we hear you. No, you were working, Kimberly. Um, whoever said something right at the end, I did not hear anything that they said. Um, is Carleen still on the line? Yes, I'm here. I don't hear her at all. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I hear selective people and I, um, I mean, did you have the equity department, um, did the equity manager have anything to add on to that um, equity definition from last meeting? No, I sent the, um, Cindy, the working definition that we are doing all our work on is coming from the equity policy. I sent it out to the committee. That was what we had. We sent it out, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. Well, a week ago, somewhere. Uh, Carly, can you say anything at all again? Or can anyone hear me? I'm mute, Millen. The definition that we, yes, I'm here. The definition that we have been using and working from is the definition straight from the equity policy that I sent out to the committee via uh, Cynthia um, the day after the last meeting. Charmaine, if you can hear me, we can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, the definition, now I can hear everybody. I don't know what happened. Um, the definition that was included on the agenda, on the top of agenda from the policy. Got it. Okay. Uh, so we've heard from Dr. Robinson um, that, uh, that we were going, is Miss Keisha on the call? Let me start. Um, no, Keisha's not on the call. She's um, preparing. We're launching the culture response of teaching um, courses. And because now she's doing the job of the program and her job, um, she's not at the meeting today. Got it. 
Okay, so um, I guess the definition is up to us if we want to um, really discuss the definition or if we want to go back and continue to um, Charmaine, continue on excuse me. Yes. Charmaine, there's a ringing and I think it's because do you still have your usually it's because the phone is on along with the other thing. Is a, we couldn't we could barely hear you because of the ringing. It might just be the static from are you on the phone or are you okay? Can you hear us? We can you hear, you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Is it better? Yes, the ringing okay. is on. I'm not sure what it was. Um so I was on the phone. I think it was the phone because at some point during the uh, transactions, I can hear some of you and I can't hear some. I'm not sure what's going on uh, today. It's a lot. But I thought the purpose of this special meeting was to go over, not only go over the um, equity definition um, from last meeting, but also to discuss leading with equity um, the input on the proposed organizational chart. And um, so I'm maybe I'm not clear of what the special meeting was going to be. So the definition was not priority of this meeting. And maybe we should be, just move right on to the import in meeting with equity portion of the meeting. Um, maybe if somebody from the committee could help me understand, because that's what I thought we had discussed. We would be discussing at the special meeting. Those were the three uh, main items that we would be discussing with meeting with equity, um, the definition, and as well as the organization chart. So if any committee member have anything to say or add to that, please do so. Uh, Ms. Regina? Your mic, I can't hear you, Ms. Regina. Ms. Regina, are you? Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to just stay on my phone because I'm not sure why it's not letting me hear anyone on my computer. Can anyone hear me? Yes. You can? Okay. No, what I said at the last meeting, um, not only we're going to go over the definition for equity, also we're going to uh, discuss the reopening of school. Okay. Uh, thank you. Kimberly, did you have your hands up? I was just going to agree with Reggie. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to say? Are we going to discuss equity definition in order to lead with equity? Um, or are we, are we focusing on just equity as an outcome? Charmaine, are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was just wondering because I couldn't, it looks like I wasn't able to turn on my um, uh, my audio. So I'm, I'm just double checking. Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you have something to contribute? Well, I guess I just wanted us to get clarity on, and I think you were trying to address it when I was messing around with my computer, uh, clarity on what it is that we feel that we want to accomplish by the end of this special meeting. Yes, ma'am. That's where I think we're on the same page um, because I had Dr. Robinson go over her equity definition and I just want input from the committee about the definition. So are we going to, you know, maybe look at some of the equity definitions that was that were presented by Dr. Robinson? Are we going to continue to work with the outcome? Um, I just I, I cannot phantom leading with equity without a solid definition. If equity is an outcome, an approach, 
and a framework, how can we just move forward with just an outcome as a definition? So I'm just trying to wrap my head around what, you know, how can we move forward with leading with equity if we can either come up with that definition or if we're going to say equity policy definition is all we need to keep going with. I, I just want some feedback. I, I'm not a one woman show, so we're a committee and I want feedback from the committee with respect to the definition. Well, uh, uh, okay, Charmaine, let me ask, is there any way that... Um we can at least hear if you can't put up right now um, the definition of equity from um, from the um, that's that's in the policy. It could be or someone, or someone can just read it. I just don't have it in okay. front of me. I don't know if everyone has it in front of them. I will read it. It's on the top of the meeting agenda, um, but I will read it. It's equity defining policy defined both as an outcome and as an action equity as an outcome would be the state that would be achieved if a student's success and well-being was no longer predictable by any social, cultural, or economic factor. Equity as an action in schools involves individuals who are will to interrupt and dismantle harmful or inequitable practices and policies, eliminate implicit and explicit biases, and create truly inclusive Culturally responsive school environments for students and children. B, ensure that each child receives what they need when they need it to develop to their full academic and social potential. C, cultivate the unique gifts, talents, and interests that reside in every child. Thank you. You're very welcome. So I've sent, oh. um, is there any way we can possibly put up, Dr. Robinson, you can share your page, maybe put up that equity definition again, please. If that's not too much to ask. Excuse me, Charmaine, just a question. I'm not quite sure how it, how it works as I know we're operating under sunshine so we can't go back and forth with each other. But is there a way that we could get these definitions and provide feedback and send it to yourself or to, to Cindy? Um, it's just going to be a, a little challenging over the phone to go into the semantics of, I like this part about this definition, that part about that definition. Are we able to work right, on it right. offline or are you trying to get to a decision today? No, I just want us to, I want a clear um, understanding if that is something we will be attacking or if we're just, it's just another content filled um, area in the agenda. Uh, but yes, we can, we certainly can do that, Marsha. I think we have about an hour, less than an hour left on this call. Um, we can do that. We, you would have to send Cindy or Dr. Robinson can send the definition to Cindy. And for the definition, the policy, it's on the agenda. It's on the top of the agenda that Cindy sent. So she can just, if Dr. Robinson would care to share her definition with us, and then we can go from there. And at this time, while we're waiting for that, because we have another meeting at the end of July, I believe, we can certainly um, focus on leading with equity with the current definition. That is sure. Excuse me, Charmaine. Um, Dr. Robinson is is wanting to say something. She's raising her hand in the comments. Yes. We have we don't usually have meetings in July and December. Okay. Just so the next meeting will be okay. August. Yes, ma'am. So we would have to call another special meeting. Okay. okay. No worries. Okay. Okay. Please, okay. Uh, Dr. Robinson, go ahead. Okay. Oh wait. Let me plug in my thing. Hang on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, to discourage the um, the sharing of the comments through Cindy. I mean, I I think in in my experience, this is such an issue that it's like you got to have a collective thought mm -hmm. process. And so I, I can share my little notations. I would encourage each of you to 
to look for other people's definitions of equity and think about it and then have a collective thought process where you come to a consensus as a group, right? Instead of just like wordsmithing something. Because in my head, it's more the spirit of it than than the words, right? And And the reason that I always talk about this algebraic definition is because the the words are lovely and they're they're fluffy, right? When you get to specifics, specific things, specific variables, to me that's what that's what tells you where to take action, right? And so I, again, I get this is how my brain works. Like you don't have to accept that part, but I would strongly encourage you to have a collective discussion. Maybe what you could do is if people find definitions of equity that they like, and I know that that Marsha and Rachel, you know, go to like 25 conferences a week about this. So, I mean, maybe they have some that they think are fantastic and they could share those that could be shared and then each of you can review them ahead of time, but then you have this collective thought process. I think that's what the most important piece is. And I agree, Dr. Robinson. I think that's why um, I, sometimes I think <laughs> without being <laughs> politically correct or without, um, let me just be honest, I guess. Um, I thought that was the purpose of this call that you know, when I was looking for the de a definition of equity with other organizations and calling Broward and calling my friends down in Miami um, and calling down to their chief office of equity, which that'll be another conversation coming up. Um, I wanted to know what was their definition. So I wanted to bring something. But then when I attended your meeting, um, when I attended your meeting, um, I had, I was like, oh, wow, I like this breakdown. And it was some of the breakdowns were very similar to Broward in Miami Day. And that's what I brought. And I thought each member would be doing the same thing. So when we discuss something, it is our homework to go. I, I just want to make it very clear that it's each of our homework respectively to go back and do our, it's, it's our duty, it's our responsibility to go do the homework and come back to the table, or we're gonna constantly go table items, table items, table items. Um, we won't be discussing anything because no one is prepared to discuss anything because we just, one person sends something or one person say something and it's like a deer in a headlight and we're back to square one. So I would implore everyone to do their homework. If we're going to, come back to the table with this discussion that we really could come back and have a meaty discussion because that's what I was prepared for today. That's why I seem a little bit confused as to why we can't discuss the definition of equity. So that's, I'll say that and be done. <laughs> well, uh, uh, this is Jackie. Yeah. I, I agree with you completely, which is the reason why I asked, you know, what is it that we want to have, have, have accomplished by the end of this particular meeting, because that was my understanding what you're saying too, that we would come back with <clears throat> with whatever research that we had done or discussions that we had done and then try to uh, talk this out, you know, intellectually, uh, making, um, well, as I say, to talk it out intellectually <laughs> and come up with some kind of uh, consensus or or feeling or understanding of what ultimately, intrinsically, um, we mean when we say equity. So yes, that's why I asked that question. I'm sorry, this is Marsha. I, I, I did not realize that we were having the definition conversation. I thought this special meeting was to discuss the reopening and the organizational chart. So unless I missed the agenda somewhere. I did not recognize that the agenda was to discuss the equity definition. And Dr. Robinson is right. We have a host of equity definitions as well as an operational framework for equity that we use to guide our work in um, Rachel and myself as it relates to Birth to 22 and some other community um, efforts. So I'm ready now to, to, to give you 
the definitions that we are using. I guess my only challenge is, um, you know, I can spit out six definitions, but I don't know what kind of learner you are, but sometimes I like to see things on paper and then pull them together to make sense of it. And I agree that we need to, once we kind of can review all of our options, if you will, then we have a collective discussion about here are the six options that we feel as though we want to narrow this discussion down to and then get input um, from the members as to does one or two uh, speak to you more and then we can do the semantics of mashing it together. But having not seen that or been able to kind of share it, it it's, it's, it's difficult. But I, I actually thought we were talking about two other things today and not the definition based on the last call. The two other things are um, very time sensitive, I believe. Um, the, and so I kind of agree with that. I also kind of perceived last time that some of the more experienced members on this committee, including um, Marsha, well, it seems like you might have had some ideas already for the definition and I wanted to listen. Um, instead of always, I'm always talking and I apologize for that. But I think today we, uh, the board is under a lot of pressure to come up with a decision regarding um, how to handle the reopening of school. And we as a committee have not weighed in. Um, and I think we are very important um, in that um, listening to the meeting last night and I agree with the decision that was discussed um, we, the biggest thing we have to do is make sure it's done equitably. If we cannot open classrooms, we have to make sure that Kim, all the Kimberly, yes, I'm so sorry. Can I interject for just a second since you're sorry. kind of segueing into the next conversation? So let's sorry. just deal with one conversation at the moment. If I can ask everyone on the committee to please um, send whatever your definition of equity that you may um, side with that you may like. Um, send that definition to Cindy and then Cindy can respectively share with everyone. If everyone can kind of do that in a timely manner, maybe by Monday, um, if that's not realistic, um, a reasonable amount of time, then send it when you get the opportunity to. And then um, we'll discuss maybe calling another meeting, a special meeting uh, later on the meeting, if that's okay with everyone, if there's no objections. Okay. Well, um, okay. I, have a, I have a comment. Yes. To make. Um, do we have any objection with the current definition that the school board is using right now? The one that we have on the agenda. I don't think because I have an objection as it as an out outcome, but I would like to see equity as an approach. I would like to, see, um, I mean, that's just me personally. I wouldn't just want to see equity as an outcome. I would like to see the framework portion of equity, the approach portion of equity. I would like to see equity not only as an action, but I would really like us to lead with equity in every sense that we could possibly lead equity in. Okay. I would just like to encourage everyone to make sure that we don't mix up. It's one thing versus all that comes with it to make it a reality. So I just hope that we would not mix up definition with action steps or anything like that. Correct. Right. That. So just keep that in mind. Because you need both, but they're not the same, is what I was trying to say. All right, so right, leading into Kimberly, I'm so sorry, I cut you off, Kimberly. You can keep going into segueing into the input on reopening. Again, I apologize for cutting off the other conversation. I did not mean to, but um, we are under the gun. Um, the board needs to uh, announce this decision next week. And we as a committee have not made a statement or provided any input or suggestions or help as far as if we start schools um, online or um, on, per internet, 
we are all representing groups that are the most vulnerable to deficiencies in that approach. And I think a lot of the constituencies that we all represent um, might have suffered in the spring um, because the school district didn't have enough time to plan out and prepare and train and get all of the access out and you know different things came up that were beyond control but now we have more time and we represent different groups that maybe we want to discuss making a statement or somehow um, planning how we're going to be involved in making sure that for me students with disabilities are getting the services that they need so that they can fully access and benefit from their education and i know um, in many of the communities around our um, county that certain areas don't have internet access and that certain families don't have somebody available to help their children with um, studying and learning when a teacher isn't right in front of them all the time. So we as a group probably should try to start working on this and it may, might be an ongoing thing um, being able to provide feedback that we found out once things start up again that there are problems um, raising those issues and making sure they're addressed quickly so we don't lose anyone. Do we have any other I mean, one, uh, I mean, that, that we have several issues that we um, still try to address and link with. Um, my school is Boston Elementary School, and I noticed that a lot of the kids still did not get a laptop. And when, when, when we did enter in contact with school administrator, we were told that to call the school and the district had a provider who was supposed to call uh, the family so that the kids can get access to a laptop. That still haven't happened. The second issue that we still uh, continue to have, uh, you only have one laptop per child per family who may have five or six children. Mm -hmm. And that family also at work. And some of the kids do not have, you know, access to a com to computer to do their work. And how we as a school district gonna tackle that. That's second thing. Third, uh, internet. Yesterday, we had a parent that called us. Uh, she just moved to an apartment and the, the previous tenant left a bill for, for 173. But when we when the parents tried to call Comcast to, to get the new um, system installed at her house, they wouldn't allow her to do that. Therefore, we uh, as an agency called Comcast and finally we were able to cut a deal where we said, okay, we'll pay half of, the, half of the previous tenant bill so that this parent can have access for her child at home and that was resolved. Therefore, I'm asking myself how many families in our uh, city of Liquid or the cities were, were facing with the same situation. And if we are going fully virtual, we need to make sure every child, every family has more than one um, computer access in the home. Dr. Robinson is raising her hand. Yes. Uh Go ahead, Dr. Robinson. Okay, thank you. So I'm so glad you're having this conversation. So, cause I'm gonna ask each of you to help with the solution, so to speak, because <clears throat> so we have, we are supposed to have spreadsheets with the name of each child that was registered in our schools and whether or not they accessed the, their device or the internet, their lessons via Google Classroom and notations on if they were called this and that and the other, right? So we should have a very good idea of what the issue is. Like some children though, we just straight can't find, right? You know, some children have their devices and internet access and are not signing on. Like that's a whole different issue, but again, if you can help us define the problem for the specific child, then we can help to resolve it. Now we have made a commitment and actually discussed yesterday in our budget conversation 
we made a commitment to one to one devices. So the the timeline though is going to be is backlogged by the devices coming from China or wherever the Chromebooks come from, right? But there's the, the financial commitment has been made for that, um, and that would be so that would alleviate the issue of you know five children in the home and one device to share. So so. We learned that lesson in, in first go round, and so we're working to resolve it. The internet access, again, we know that that's an issue. Um, I'm just going to ask, I would, I would be happy to be bombarded with emails that says, here's the child's name in school and here's the problem, because sometimes I'm not sure if things get lost in the bureaucracy, right? Uh, but I could tell you this. I've asked them and asked on the public record yesterday to outline an equity plan around the not just the devices, but also the Internet access piece. Because so the devices, as I said, there's going to be a time delay. I think they estimated October before every device is. We expect every device to be here. So who gets it first? Right. Like what is the equity thought around who gets the first batch of devices that come in, right? And then the same thing for the internet. Now, we're not in control of some of the internet access. Well, we're not in control of most of it, but we have community partners like Children's Services Council and Quantum donated um, money for hotspots for kids in the glades over the summer, right? And so, and we've actually had a lot of philanthropy in this area so the question is, if somebody puts, you know, $10,000 on the table for Internet access, who gets that? Who's the first ones in line? Like, what is the equity consideration there? And I would love for you guys to, you know, not necessarily now, but it's weigh in on that. Um, you know, I've made it clear that I think for hot spots, homeless children are, are the first on the on the list. But. You know, but you guys are going to see stuff that that I don't see, and definitely that the rest of the district doesn't see. So I look forward to your ongoing input here, um, because this is going to be a challenge. There's a whole lot of challenges embedded. So right now we're talking distance, but the other challenges will come when when things get better. And I, I pray that they will, that we will end up in a hybrid situation. I don't imagine that we're going to go straight from distance learning to so-called regular school, right? And so the hybrid situation will have another set of challenges that we should be able to see um, coming. Like, so we should have enough time to have those conversations. But anyway, I'm, a, I'm really going to try to quit talking. Thank you. Hi, this is Robin with um, FAU Card. I do have a question um, with Dr. Robinson. You said if we get you the name of the student in the school that they attend, because we're about to have a staff meeting. Actually, I'm going to have to log off for our staff meeting. And I can ask all of our clinicians that have a, a certain caseload um, and they can find out from their caseload who's really having the issues. Is it just the Internet action or is it actually the devices? Right. So, yes. So what I'm saying is I can't. I can't address the broad generalities have been addressed, right? With the one-to-one -one devices and working with partners, even it's not fixed. And then the other thing, just so you know, is, is Palm Beach County is working on expanding access um, to the internet. So I'm thankful for that. They're putting some of their um, CARES dollars on the table. But but yeah, so if but if you have a child that is having has whichever issue, let me know because so, I can try to work it through for that child while the system is trying to work it through more broadly. Okay, so device and internet access and you need their name and their school that they attend? Right, and, and their contact information, actually, if you have okay. that. So, um, yeah, and, then, and what the, the issue is, for example, if the issue is, as Reggie described, the previous um, resident had uh, you know, left the bill with Comcast so they won't, you know, if you could give as much information as possible about the the problem, then that will help me figure out who to go to. And then I can do like my own spreadsheet. You know, actually what I'm going to do. OK, I got a bright idea. I'm going to create a um, Google form and I'll send it to Cindy who can share it with everybody. And then you can write in there. And that way I can track it. That's what I'm trying to get to so I can track things easier. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Dr. Robinson, 
Yes. Uh, in the spreadsheet that you were referring to, um, is that something that we can uh, ask assistance just from the individual schools, the administration, who have this uh, greater contact with parents and students? Uh, maybe they can also create their school spreadsheet. And that's already done, though. That's already done? No, that's been done. Okay. That's how they were doing it in the first place. That's how they were doing it in April and May. Okay. And it was the regional offices was, were working with the schools and all that. But my thing was like, no, I need to, it needs to be held centrally, right? Yeah. Like the yeah. schools too, but the central office. If I say to the superintendent, wait a minute, how many children can we not find? Because I keep hearing these stories about principals knocking on doors and trying to track down children and they can't find them. And so then when we say how many children didn't log on, the question is how many didn't log on because we didn't address their need versus how many didn't log on because they went, they went to live with, you know, Auntie M in Georgia or something. Like I, I just yeah. wanted central office to have some ownership in that. So yeah, so they had to get the school-based spreadsheets to feed into the central spreadsheet. I have a question. You know, uh, what about, you know, for those of us who do not work directly with the school system, what about any confidentiality issues about supplying names and asking for names and things like that? Because, you know, we're in a time that, you know, whether it's HIPAA, whether it's confidentiality, minors, et cetera, you know, how mm -hmm. we access that without violating any laws or not getting in trouble? So, okay, one, one for us and for the two, what we did, uh, we worked with Principal Sun and we worked with Liquid High and we, we created a form, we call it a family assistant form. We asked the parents, um, please give us authorization to be able to share information, not only with the school, also with our, our, um, our social workers who are working inside of the schools. And what's been happening and which is really working, every time our, our, our parents call the center, they say they need or they have this need, whether it's rent, we ask them, to, the first question we ask them, do you have internet at home? Yes. Um, do you have uh, equipment? No. How many kids live in the home? And they'll, they'll tell us. So far, I just placed an order for 50 Chromebook myself for my after school program because to that assessment, I found out some of my kids did not have Chromebook. And, I'm, and I want to make sure I'm getting ready. If we are going virtual or, or hybrid program, any child in my program that doesn't have one ready for them, because I, I heard from the principal, like Ms. Tannen said, I mean, last uh, Ms. Robinson said, it's going to take probably until October for, for those computers to arrive. But I'm already making plan to make sure that we have 50 Chromebook available because we serve 163 kids at our school to make sure that every child in the aftercare had that access until the school board will be able to meet that objective. And how to do it is to get um, the parent to give you authorization so that we, sh we can share information back and forth. Once you have that, you don't have no HIPAA compliance issues. Thank you. Sorry, Dr. Robinson, go ahead. Oh, no, your answer was better than mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Committee members, do we have anyone else who had any um, addition to add to that? I think I'm just, I'm actually listening and taking notes. Um, right now, but is there well, Ms. Charmaine, which Ms. Yes, Charmaine, as a committee, so the district right now, I believe, have three three different plans. One is to go fully virtual, uh, the other one is to um, to be face to face, and then the other one is a hybrid. As a committee, which one are we will be we're gonna be approved or at least give the, the school district some guidance on that? The face-to-face well, cannot be happening let's, for me. Let's discuss it as a team because we certainly need to vote on it, but let's discuss it as a team. No, we're going distance. We're going distance now. Oh, right. fully? Yeah, we're going distance now. Okay. I mean, it will be official next week, but I mean, and I've been fighting for this for a long time because, you know, I won't even get into it, but just finally, you know, finally they see what I see, I guess. But anyway, but I think, but so the issue is, so right now we're going distance. The question will be how long? I will be working with some public health people, actually have a meeting this afternoon to outline metrics, right? So, you know, you may have seen metrics 
from the state of New York and other places, a whole bunch of people at Metrics just say you could go from phase one to phase two if this and that and the other is happening. We're going to outline metrics for the school district to consider for when we could go into the hybrid mode, right? Like, and then some period of time from hybrid to regular school. Now, I'm going to tell you the, the public health and infectious disease people that, that I know, that I talk to, that I have confidence in, don't think that we will be in regular school this school year. Okay? So, like, I'm not saying that, like, in board meetings and stuff, because I think it'll completely freak people out, but which means to me that it's even more important that we get it right, that we hear from you, that you bring the voice of the young people that you represent to the table so we can work these things out, right? So that we could do, you know, much better than we did in the spring, uh, even though I'm still going to give staff a whole lot of credit for turning on the dime. They did a 180 in two weeks, and so I have to give them, you know, respect for that. But now that we're going to be in some form of distance learning, whether it's, whether it's full or part-time, you know, expected for the next school year, that we really need to double down on analyzing the needs of the students, the children with disabilities, um, the children whose first language is not English, the children who have been underachieving, um, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, the children that suffer from multi-generational trauma, all that, right? How do we meet their needs? And so, and, and so again, I'm just, it goes back to that equity equation for me. It's like each thing, can we name each thing? So, because everybody has talked about the devices and the internet access. We got that. Now let's get to the to the real real. Like that stuff is real, but that's like big picture. The philanthropists and stuff are happy to write a check for that. What I want is to for you to to take your experience and your heart and, and tell us what we need to do to tweak this system to meet the needs of the children that that you work with. That's I'm because now we get now we get to the hard part, right? Yeah. Um, the Charmaine, um, and I, can I just say something here? Sure. Yes, okay, I, I see is maybe uh, the next major in terms of with the, the equipment and the internet, but then we're also are going to look at need to look at what kind of support will parents and teachers need in order to be able to use um, the, the the devices. Now, I think that. Uh, and access the internet. How, how are they actually going to, that someone may have never worked with a computer before. Uh, I'm just using that as a, you know, sort of an example, maybe someone, a student who is homeless, but they're going to need the support and the training. And I think because if they don't have that, then that's going to lead to an inequity also. You have homes where kids are, have computers all to, you know, they've got several computers, kids are on them all the time. And then you have uh, homes where children don't have any access to a computer unless they are in school, so they're not used to using it. And especially integrating the learning piece with the technology piece. Now, I want to think, and maybe Dr. Uh, Robinson can confirm this, I think that the district does have some kind of a tech support um, that's set up, but the last time I looked at it, um, it seemed to me that the hours were limited. And if you do have more students in a home than what you have, the equipment, you know, and they need, they have to take turns using it or whatever, then there may be off hours or weekend hours where they still need to have, these families need to have some support and the students need to have support in uh, being able to use them to do what there's the work that they uh, need to do. So that's that tech support is something that I have a, a question with that could lead to an inequity if everyone does not have it to the degree that they need to have it in order to be able to do the academic work. Um, you want me to respond? Mm -hmm. I agree, Jacqueline. Go ahead, Dr. Robinson, and respond. Okay, so here's an another area where we need your help. So staff is aware of that, right? And so um, in terms of training of teachers and students, and families on how to um, use the technology to help Im improve the academics for their children, right? So, and I, I 
I'm at 99% confidence that they are working on the parent training plan. But here's the deal. If, like, I remember when I was afraid of the computer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, a long time ago, but I was afraid of the thing. So if, if I'm afraid of the computer, then am I going to do an online class? So this is where we need the community organizations represented in this committee. So you have parents that you're working with. So then maybe then it's going through the training in a um, with those parents to help decrease that fear. The school district is going to work on on providing the training uh, platform. Is I don't know if that's the right word, but like the program, but con- actually connecting it to the real people. Because, you know, we tend to say, well, it's available. Why aren't you accessing it? So what I'm saying is you can help be the intermediary to help families to access it. And then to your point, I think, is what's what's the number that they can call after hours if they're having trouble? Right. Yes, that's part of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as I looked at it, there was no hours on unless that's changed on the weekends and, and later on in the evening. But I agree completely because there are parents and you don't want to shame people with this. So there has to be some kind of process or structure in place where that does not happen. <clears throat> because as you say, many people have maybe don't have or haven't had um, the kind of the background in it. But I just put that out there, not necessarily be as, as that specific, but only to say that that's an overall issue that needs to be addressed, whether or not part of it is from the school district, part of it is from the community or whomever. But we have to get specific. That's my point. I'm The broad generalities, we've already had all those conversations. So let's like, I'm, I'm creating an outline as you guys are talking, okay? Because I can't do broad generalities anymore. I have to do specific problem, proposed solution. And that's that's how I'm walking with it. So I'm like all ears and not just today, but because we, you know, we already had, you know, the the educational debt manifested in the academic achievement gap, superimposed by the COVID-19 slide, superimposed by the summer slide. We, we got, we can't keep sliding. And so, and we're not going to fix it until we get to specifics in terms of issues and children. And so that's what I'm hoping that this group will partner with me on. Okay. I, I mean, I agree with that. I just wanted to, um, I know we have a few hands up and um, wanted to add on to the piece. Let me tell you, I have a kindergarten that's coming in and I work closely with one of the schools, with his preschool. And the amount of, I think our issue is going to be our kindergartners. Um, just simply where his school is currently doing kindergarten virtual um, assessments online. Mm-hmm. These parents are like, if this is what it's going to be, how do we do this? And how are we going to do this? How are we going to read? Well, of course, it's going to be through enrollment. We're going to reach the kindergarten, incoming kindergarten parents. But when right now, all of these incoming or majority of these incoming kindergarten parents do not have they're not dealing with this on a daily basis. Their kids are not going online. They're not. So we're really going to have to step up as a community to help these incoming kindergarten parents. Um, so I just wanted to add that uh, one. And two, the question I wanted to know is, do the district have a concentrated poverty area? Like, do they know where their concentrated poverty students live? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> do we have do it's simple to say Any, yeah, listen, do, anything with data, that we got action? that. I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay. We How have heat we maps. So say it again. How can we get that data? Um you want do you want the heat map? Sure. We can start with that. I mean, listen, I'm a, listen, I'm a, I'm gonna teach you about school district data, okay? But all right. So I can, um, I'll see if I have it in my handy dandy computer. I think I have it saved. Okay. And if not, we can get it. I, I, can, de- I can decipher manipulation data. I do a pretty good job. <laughs> um, Carlene. 
Yes, I was just going to share um, portions of, we had a survey that went out to the parents. Um, Dr. Fenoy had a work group to be created, which is still um, in play, to address some of the concerns that you all have shared today in regard to parents navigating and being able to effectively partner with their students. So everyone from the parent that is tech savvy to the parent that doesn't have time or has not been using the computer on a regular basis. So um, we have sets of videos that show parents step by step how to navigate, how to um, basically partner with their students in the Google Classroom and Google Meets, how to um, address all the email messages and notifications, grading, um, notifications that they receive via distance learning and how to manage that. So we have a, a committee that is working on all of the how-to videos. We got the information directly from the parents that completed the surveys. They were very explicit about what they needed help with. They were very explicit about the modes of how they wanted to be communicated with to get the information that we have. So it's one thing to have a, a, a website which everyone doesn't go to and it's not always easy to navigate. So we were creating quick videos that could be put out on Twitter or sent out to the community that they can use from their phones. And if you wanted a longer version, we have webinars for the parent that wants it, the long version of it. But we have quick tip videos, how-to videos, and they all came from the parents. So um, those videos are being translated at this time in Spanish, um, Haitian Creole, and in Portuguese. They're currently in that process of being translated. The English versions have been um, completed. So we took what the parents told us at that time, along with uh, what the parents told us verbally, essential workers um, told us at that time. And basically parents want something quick that they can use, they want to have be able to access it. So we did the how-to videos. That was their request. So those videos, like I said, are done in English. They're being translated. I can share them with the group. And then if you all feel that is something else is there, maybe your constituents are telling you, hey, I need a video for blah, blah, blah. So we have one that's as simple as how to navigate the district's website. Like this is where you go to get to the parent portal to get all the information you need and this is how it's organized. But if those videos that we have created based on the parent's voice are not, there are additional topics that need to be addressed, you can let me know. And that is our work group's job to create those and get parents on um, the tools that they need um, to bear, be able to partner with their child. Um, when they're working with them, or when a child has a question of any sort, where they need to go to get answers for their questions. So I just wanted to update the group on that, and that is currently in play, and those videos will be released. I didn't think it was right to release the English version yet without having all four languages translated. So right now, everything is multicultural being translated. But after we share the videos and you feel like there's more, just let me know and we'll make them. Carlene, I have a question for you. Thank you for that information. Um, of the parents that we have here in Palm Beach County, do you have kind of like an idea of what percentage of those parents responded to the survey? Yes, we had 15,000 responses to the parent survey. We had mostly 14,000 something in English, and when we didn't get a lot of Haitian Creole responses, we went to the radio stations. Okay. Radio stations, we got the responses. And so, and well, I take that back. We went to the CLFs, the CLFs and the radio stations. And so Spanish, we had responses. So we had over total 15,000, but 14,000 something in England. And that was when we, this was after the parents, had been um the children went home for spring break and <laughs> and so the good part about the survey and the timing of it was the fact that parents were experiencing 
the uh, discomfort or whatever it is that they were experiencing at that time, and they were able to fill out the survey then. So it was approximately 15,000, and that was back in, this is July, so that was back in June, end of uh, May, June, when we got that information. And like I said, the parents did not bite their tongues. They told us exactly, for the ones that replied, told us what they needed. But as of course, needs change. And now that we're, well, let me be honest with you. A lot of the responses that we received help us to do the how-to videos, but it helped Dr. Sheffield enhance distance learning. So a lot of what you're about to hear about distance learning, the parents were very explicit about the number of times they saw their teachers online, the number of times they were not quality work um, to complete. All of that information was shared. My survey results were shared with uh, Dr. Sheffield. And of course, the district did one again for reopening. Put all that together, we got pretty strong voice around it. But I did share all the results with Dr. Sheffield. And if you listen to the board meeting last night, Justin Katz from CTA shared a lot of what parents said they wanted. So hopefully when parents heard him say, this is what is going to be like next year, they heard their responses in that. Because like I said, parents did not bite their tongues. They were actually in it and they told us how they felt about it, what they needed and what was important. So between myself and Dr. Sheffield, and the other district survey, we have those results and that's how we built it on the parents' voice. Okay, what other quick question? And that is for those students who are in group homes or who are incarcerated. What was, what's the question about them? Well, I mean, how are they being addressed? I mean, are they in the group the home, went out to every, I'm sorry. Well, the surveys went out to everyone um, that, a school-aged child in the school district of Palm Beach County. So they, their parents would have been included in that survey. But as, in regards to specifics, that I can speak to um, what's, um, Mrs. Hubbard Williams to give me that specific information. But they, everybody got the survey. And it was sent to them via text message. We got better response from parents being able to do it from their phones because that's what they told us they like um, over all of it. Um, better response with the uh, text message. But it went to all the student parents. Do but, those, but those students, for example, at the group homes or in a jail, they are under someone else's supervision. So the information wouldn't be, as far as I know, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, would not be going specifically to parents of students who are in, say, a group home but it should go to the administration. Uh, I, I just want to uh, know if you can confirm. Let me out, you know what? Let me reach out to H Mrs. Uh, Hubbard Williams on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, they get an answer for you. Okay, thank you. You said incarcerated students, right? Group homes and incarcerated. Okay, Dr. Robinson put in the chat, it went to the Guardian, but if, yeah, if you need me to check up. So perhaps in some cases, and I'm not sure, then the, the guardian would be considered to be uh, the administrators within the group home? It's oh, whoever the home. guardian is of record. Yeah. yeah. Jackie will be whoever is listed. A lot of times those communications would have gone to, if they're a dependent child, dependency case manager, the probation officer that's charged um, with their ward of the state. And in, in those situations, because there may not be a parent, if you will, on record. So that would be the guardian, uh, essentially that system that is serving um, that that student. So I I think Jackie, you're, you're bringing up a point, kind of kind of back to, to Dr. Robinson's uh, earlier question around what specific areas can Correct. this support as we work with community groups that may have a line of, of attention to some of these students who are facing further marginalization because of some of the challenges with distance learning, reopening, access, so on and so forth. And so maybe what we can do is, is think about, okay, how do we bring those systems online? If we're going to, to stay with that last example around incarcerated youth 
or youth who are living in um, non-traditional homes or in foster care or living in residential group settings, so on and so forth. Um, it'll be important to ensure that whatever is being done to support uh, students' needs, that information is being funneled to the right uh, system partners who may have an easier access to those young people. Now, I know that I've been on a couple of the calls with, with child welfare folks have said that their case managers had been going out, checking to make sure that kids were logging in. They did have equipment for kids that were in foster care. Probably those children had um, a little bit more oversight and access and supports than even some of the kids who were just, um, you know, kind of at home with parents, if you will. So um, we learned that and that was kind of good to know because we've been kind of monitoring, you know, some of the, some of just of the concerns similarly to what Jackie raised with some of those uh, populations. And we can certainly get the same idea in terms of how DJJ were engaging with those students that were incarcerated, making sure they had access to the equipment to complete their schoolwork, so on and so forth. But, um, hey guys. I was gonna say, I was just gonna add that I asked the question. Carly, before, yes. If we can if we can kind of wrap it up, I know Martha has been having her hands up for quite Maria, I'm sorry, have been having her hands up for quite some time. And we're going back um and we're just everyone is chiming in. I just want to make sure that she has the opportunity to talk and we really also touch on um the the other position, the other item that's on the agenda, because I think it's important and necessary by next week. So go ahead, go ahead and march, um, Marcia and Carlene, just wrap it up and then uh, Maria, you'll be there. No, only thing I was going to add is before we ever sent the, um, the, the surveys out, I asked the question for any student that we are actually responsible for in the school district of Palm Beach, will this reach them? And I was told yes, because it goes based on what's in the system to the parent or guardian. And so that was my understanding. That's the only thing I was gonna add. Everybody in the system, period, if we're responsible for them, it went to whoever was listed as their, their parent and guardian. The last comment I was gonna make sure, I mean, I know that we're about out of time, is that when we discuss, again, back to Dr. Robinson's point about what are the specific things that we could do? Not thinking theoretical, but we know that um, at least we have heard through the parents that we connect with, that there were a lot of parents that were concerned about how are the supports that they need in place for their student, whether they're, that student is special needs, an exceptional learner, an English language learner, the distance learning platform and environment with the inconsistent participation of some teachers actually being live, providing live instruction and doing a lot of the pre-recorded stuff that was, in some cases, some parents said, you know, very fluffy, not real strong content. But those learners who have special needs, who need different kinds of supports, there was no way in the distance learning platform to accommodate those kinds of students. And I think if we're really going to talk about centering equity, we need to ensure that the available supports and resources are brought to bear for students who have, who need additional overlay of support. So one of the, the concerns certainly is access and Wi-Fi, but I'm concerned about the overall infrastructure to support the whole learning for children. Even for those who have equipment and have the Wi-Fi, the, 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 the types of interactions that they were having weren't always supportive to their educational needs, their learning styles, so on and so forth. So I'd like to see some intentionality around those supports and not to mention the cumbersome uh, status of the district's website when you're trying to find tutorial services, figure out where to go. It just links you to someplace else. There's no face interaction and that's, that's a challenge. Parents want somewhere to call, some FaceTime, some available supports and the office hours of that teachers when they offered it, that some offered it were just not sufficient. That's kind of what we've been hearing from our parents. And that's why we took that and they've announced it. So there will be office hours. Um, that's the part I was talking about with um, Dr. Sheffield. 
They will be FaceTime. It's literally scripted out the number of minutes every day that the teachers will be spending with the students. But Dr. Sheffield can speak to that um, uh, more than I can. But last night that was shared um, and he has already agreed with it. So 98% um, of what Dr. Sheffield wanted um, to do differently based on all the feedback. So office hours were in there, teacher face-to-face -face time, real life teaching all day. And you're right, there does have to be conversation about the IEP needs um, for students that have um, those accommodations. But Dr. Sheffield could speak a lot more to that, but they did hear exactly what um, Ms. Guthrie just said. A lot of what she said is in the new version that will start now. Thank you, Carlene. Maria, go ahead, um, Maria. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, Ms. Millen and Ms. Guthrie uh, kind of tapped into what I was going to say. Uh, we have so much valuable information that needs to uh, be shared with parents and the community for that uh, so that we can all be on the same page. One of the things that's always concerning to me is the language barrier, but Ms. Millen, uh, she did discuss that. I think it's imperative and obviously I'm going to speak on behalf of the Hispanic community because that's the one that I work the most with. Um, but it's 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 important. I think sometimes that just kind of doesn't get filtered enough or deepened enough. And, and I'm afraid that a lot of these students are falling uh, behind. Um, and we, I, I, I wish that I had a magic one where I could just fix everything, but that's a concerning for me. Uh, all four languages, not just as, as Spanish. I mean, we have to be considerate of all. Um, so I think that that is a, a huge need. And I say it because we get the calls at the chamber all the time. I don't know what's going on with the school. I, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand it. I don't know how to get to it. Um, so I, I, I would love to, if, if there is any way that the Hispanic Chamber can help in that sense, uh, we certainly have volunteers and ambassadors and myself included. Uh, I think I'm, I'm very imperative with all this valuable information that is shared however we can so that, and to Dr. Robinson's point, that all children have the same uh, uh, opportunity to, to move forward and, and be successful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I know it's a little over our time, but uh, may I ask if charter schools are reaching the same decision for school reopening? So, okay. Um, charter schools have their own governing boards. Um, so the answer on the test I think is no, they do not have to abide by our decision. Um, they have to write their own reopening plan to be submitted to us and then submitted to the Florida Department of Education. But they could decide to go full school if they wanted to. I don't really know if we would approve that, but um, they don't have to abide by our rules is the short answer. But I think most of them will do what we decide. I think most of them are following the district's lead on, on various things, but they don't have to. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as long as it's, uh, I'll, as long as it's recorded, Reginald, um, I know she had to leave, but she'll be able to hear that. Or Rachel, oh no, she's probably still on, I'm sorry. Um, really quickly, if we, I learned, um, I'm here. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm looking at Reginald, who said she had another meeting. Um, if we can just extend the time by 10 minutes um, or so, uh, I learned that we did not have a quorum at the beginning of this meeting. Um, so anything that we had to really vote on is um, really table to the next meeting, honestly, um, because we don't have a quorum to vote. Um, but I did want to touch on one of the last things that was on the agenda, which was the superintendent. Am I saying it right, Cindy? Um, the input on the proposed organizational chart. 
uh, the school district proposed organization chart. Um, did I know we spoke about it last meeting? Was there any further input? I do have one request before we log off, but was there any further input from anyone else who had a burning desire to talk about this particular item? Other well, as I recall, that came forth. Charmaine, as, as I recall, I'm looking at the notes here. I think that we had mentioned maybe asking uh, Keith Oswald mm -hmm. um, to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I recall that. We certainly did. I reached yeah, out. To, what's that? We just going to say, I reached out to Keith to ask um, when I did follow-up items to send to you all um, from the last meeting. I reached out to Keith um, in regards to the request from Ms. Calloway. I took all of the questions that you all had and the requests that you had. That was one of them. And I reached out to Keith and he said that he would get back with me. So I did share that with him. Um, the comment that was made in the last meeting, for his presence to share what he envisions for equity. And he he acknowledged it and he said he would get back. Okay, thank you. Miss Carlene, um, while he's uh while we're waiting on Keith to get back with us, there's two things that I had. One, um, I know Kim had made the uh, motion or she assisted with the motion. Actually, we all agreed on this motion at the last meeting. Um, I just wanted to shift the job description of the chief officer of equity. Um, if we can, since we're focusing on chief equity, if chief officer of equity, it kind of is a little redundant to add deputy superintendent because that he's our, that person would already be at that highest level didn't to add on slash chief officer of equity. Um, so perhaps either we're dropping that deputy, a deputy of superintendent and leaving chief officer of equity um, or shifting those wordings a little bit around, um, if you will. But my request, I mean, that's the little semantics that I'm not even concerned about. My request to you, Carlene, is there a way that we can get job descriptions of chief officer of equity from around the country? Um, just so that we're ready to when yeah. that if when if and yes. when that opportunity come, we will be able to start the work right away to identify because that is one of our responsibilities with this committee to identify what that job description for our chief officer of equity would look like. Um, if we can get you know if we yes. can start working on job descriptions of chief officer for equity, with where it could be Indianapolis, Jefferson County, you know Miami Dade, whatever else. Yes, um, when I went to um, write the job descriptions for the program planner, because there was no job description for the program planner, even though we had someone working in the position, and the job description for um, the equity of access, I planned backwards. So I planned, when I wrote those two job descriptions to get approved by the board, I already researched what a director would look like, what a chief would look like. And so I took all of those and then I'm backwards plan, um, even though we didn't have them. And that's how I wrote the other two positions. So first of all, not everyone has one, like they're far in between, but I did pull all across the United States that I could find. So yes, they're, they're definitely out there, definitely. Um, however, it's not as plentiful as you might think. But yes, I pull those. So if you would like, are you asking me to send you some examples of um, a de job descriptions that already exist in the United States that I pulled before? Is that what you're asking? Correct, correct. Okay, and then the other question is, I need clarification. Are you all, I'm not under the under, what I was told that, are you all saying that Keith uh, or you all are looking for Keith to be the chief of equity, or are you saying that that you, you all are working to have equity added to the deputy's duties and responsibilities? I'm I'm totally confused. To be so I was confused. Okay. Uh, we're yeah. not looking at the actual person um, because I don't think we should be focusing on the person. We should be focusing on the position. If I if I remember. 
correctly that we're focusing on that position and the position was a chief uh, officer of equity. It was deputy superintendent slash chief office of equity was the last that we discussed. But when you already have someone at the highest level, it's not necessary to add chief officer of equity. But um, okay, okay. Uh, uh, Charmaine, Charmaine, if I can just interject here, uh, the Coalition for Black Student Achievement, um, uh, we we really pushed to have that position. Uh, for the uh, chief uh, officer of equity, mm -hmm. because the um, the uh, original, I think, the revised um, chart, okay, organization chart would have equity broken up into silos, okay, and one of the things that we wanted to give that uh, that position or that actual the, the equity piece, okay, that everything that we do in this district is seen through the lens of equity and it be at a level, okay, that there would be an oversight for everything, not just academically, although that's clear, but in all decisions that the district would make. So we felt that that was extremely important rather than have that siloed under a particular area or, or department. So my question is, are we talking about the deputy superintendent's position staying as it is and adding an additional position of chief equity officer? Yes. I use Keith's name is because Keith's name was used at the last meeting. So we're talking about two positions. Yes, I can definitely um, send you, I, I left it all in office because we printed it all when I was writing the job descriptions. But yes, I can send the job descriptions that I was able to find the last time when I was building backwards. I'll send those to Cindy, as many of them as I can find. I'll send them all to Cindy, and then you will have those. And I'll get them at the highest level. Some of them are not at the highest level, but they're at the almost like a deputy. They're right below the superintendent. So I'll send you. I'll send you what we pulled and anything else that's, that's out there. Yes, I can send you that. And thanks for the clarification on that. It will be um, basically two. Positions. That's what I was. I was needed understanding around. You're very welcome. Any, uh, uh, Dr. Robinson, you are recognized. Thank you. So I am now speaking as the um, chair of the Coalition for Black Student Achievement. That was not the coalition's position. We did not say we wanted two separate positions. Okay, so please, Ms. Miller, don't run down the street with that. Now, this committee might decide that. I don't know, right? But I'm just talking about the 25 million conversations that we had around that proposed organizational chart. What was clear is that the group did not want the equity work siloed over, like on the aside with another chief of this and that and the other. It was like student wellness and something and equity, right? And so even in that, equity was minimized. The group was clear that they wanted the, the school-based staff to be feeding on the food chain up to this okay. equity chief, right? As, as well as curriculum. Those were the two major areas that were discussed the most in terms of be, having line authority to the equity officer, right? So, I mean, and so, and the recommendation then was deputy superintendent slash chief officer of equity because we know in real life somebody was going to raise their hand and say, well, we can't have a chief officer of equity. We can't add another chief because that's a budget impact and it's too much and blah, blah, blah. But the point was to have equity work centered over the top of the academic house. Now, we did not discuss a chief officer of equity that would be over the entire district. For example, what the recommendation did not include supervision over facilities and school police and all that on that side of the house. It was focused on academics, equity in the academic world, right? So I'm really glad to hear Ms. Postal say that she, you want to look at job descriptions from across the country because I know that a true, true chief equity officer would essentially be sitting like immediately under the superintendent and all things would feed 
to that chief equity officer, including stuff on the capital side of the house. Like, which way you recommend going with that? Like, I don't know. It's, I'm not, I'm not going to say what you should do, but I am really, really thrilled to hear that you want to see what other people are doing and study it before you make a recommendation. So can I just get clarity to this? I can get the descriptions. That's not a problem. So with all that said, what is the committee's stance on, are you all just getting the job descriptions because this will be a separate position or you're looking at the duties and responsibilities being merged with the current deputy position who is in second in charge in the district? I need clarity on that. Or is it just a I think last time we said ultimately, aspirationally, it would be to have this chief equity officer that is, as Dr. Robinson just described, a, a step below and has command over many, many areas. But we recognize that in these times, it may be difficult, at least this was the conversation at the last meeting, to get there. So a fair compromise, something that we could support, is a a slash emerging of the duties with the deputy superintendent who has a line site over schools, particularly schools and curricula, because that's where the things seem to fall down, like the wheels fall off because individual principals are responsible for their campuses and tend sometimes operate in, in kind of a mini chiefdom fashion. And if it's off to the side, it's less likely that there will be uh, the type of integration that we would like to see. So I think it's a both and question Like we would want to see um, job descriptions, things that could be merged into an existing position as well as aspirationally continuing to push for this really executive senior position one day to, to sit in an office by itself. At least that's what I thought I understood at the last meeting. Okay, that answers my question. I just left the meeting last time. I left it at 10 o'clock. I left early. So that, that clears it up. I will get the job description I had and I'll look for the other ones that may be out there since I last looked, which was maybe seven months ago. And I'll send those to Cindy and um, I would encourage everyone else to do the same um, as well. But I will send them to Cindy and she'll send those out to you. Thank you, Ms. Millen. I think before you left the call, we were actually using names and a specific person versus dealing with putting in it. So um, I'm glad that everyone can kind of clear up what it is. I think we just said uh, before we can make a decision of how we want it to even look like, let's just let's just get those job descriptions as you send them and then we can reconvene and um, then have a, a true input on how we would like that to look. I think that should do well. Um, does anyone else have anything else that they would like to add? Hearing none, I'm gonna move forward. <laughs> There's no voting, but a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Adjourned at 10.48, Cindy. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Got it. Ten forty eight. Ten forty eight. Thank you all for all the work that you are doing. And um and I think with Miss Carlene also getting us that job to skip description, we can too do our work and we can ask um and we can bring forth some job descriptions as well. Um so a little home book for us. Thank you, Marsha. You guys have a great afternoon or a great day. It's 1049. You guys have a great day and thank you so much for everything that you are doing. Thank you. Feel better, Charmaine. I will. It'll be fun. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Have a good one.